together and worship the Lord together and fellowship together and get into his word. Amen. You know, uh, man, it's so exciting. Every time we open up God's word, he speaks right to where we're at. So let's open in a word of prayer. Lord Jesus, thank you. Thank you that we can come together as the body of Christ, as you told us to, Lord, that we can fellowship with one another. God, that um, we would grow stronger in our faith in these perilous times. Faith comes from hearing, hearing from the word of God, that we'd get into your word, Lord. We'd be excited about it. And uh, Lord, I just pray that you would um, wake up all of us, Lord, wake up the church that we'd see what's happening in these days. We'd be on the alert. Satan is prowling around like a roaring lion seeking someone to devour. May he not devour anybody in this church, Lord. May we be on fire for you. May we have a passion for you, Lord. And uh, thank you that we can just even be alive and come to church today. <laughs> it's another day to glorify you. So we love you and praise you. And uh, we lift up this whole service to you in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. If you'd like to stand, you can stand. If you feel more comfortable sitting, go ahead and sit. Let's worship the Lord together. The Lord knows where your heart is. Sometimes that's scary. Sometimes our heart's not where it should be. But let's, uh, Lord, we ask you to just remove all the distractions and the stress and anxiety and pressure of the world and just help us to just um, like how you tune an instrument, Lord, that we would tune our hearts to you, Lord, and just be um, on the right the right frequency with you, Lord, and that we would be able to um, just open our hearts to you and, and our voices to you and worship you and, and give you that, that small sacrifice that pleases you. In Jesus' name, amen. You hear me when I call, you are my morning song. Though darkness fills the night, he cannot hide the light. Whom shall I fear? You crush the enemy underneath my feet. You are my sword and shield, though troubles linger still. Whom shall I fear? I know who goes before me. I know who stands behind. The God of angel armies is always by my side. The one who reigns forever, he is a friend of mine. The God of angel armies is always by my side. My strength is in your name, for you alone can say, you will deliver me. Yours is the victory. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I fear? I know who goes before me. I know who stands behind. The God of angel armies is always by my side the one who reigns forever he is a friend of mine the god of angel armies is always by my side and nothing formed against me shall stand you hold the whole world in your hands. I'm holding on to your 
promises. You are faithful. You are faithful. And nothing formed against me shall stand. You hold the whole world in your hands. I'm holding on to your promises. You are faithful. You are faithful. You are faithful. I know who goes before me. I know who stands behind. The God of angel armies is always by my side. The one who reigns forever, he is a friend of mine. The God of angel armies is always by my side. The God of angel armies is always by my side. This is the air I breathe. The air I breathe. This is the air I breathe. The air I breathe. Your holy presence living in me. This is my daily bread my daily bread this is my daily bread my daily bread your, your very, very word spoken to me and I for you and I I'm lost without you this is the air I breathe This is the air I breathe. The air I breathe. Your holy presence living in me. This is my daily bread. My daily bread. Is my daily bread, my daily bread, your very word spoken to me, and I, I'm desperate for you. for 
Can we turn down my guitar and the monitor like at least an hour? Thank you. Everyone needs compassion, a love that's never failing. Let mercy fall on me. Everyone needs forgiveness, the kindness of a Savior, the hope of nations. The Savior, He can move the mountains. My God is mighty to save, He is mighty to save forever. Author of salvation, He rose and conquered the grave, Jesus conquered the grave. So take me as you find me. All of my fears and failures fill my life again. I give my life to follow everything I believe in. Now I surrender. I surrender all. Sing God is mighty to save, He is mighty to save forever, author of salvation, He rose and conquered the grave, Jesus conquered the grave, shine your light and let the whole world see, we're singing for the glory of the risen King. Jesus, shine your light and let the whole world see. We're singing for the glory of the risen King. Savior, He can move the mountains. My God is mighty to sing. He is mighty to save forever, author of salvation. He rose and conquered the grave, Jesus conquered the grave. Savior, He can move the mountains, my God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save forever, author of salvation. He rose and conquered the grave, Jesus conquered the Shining in darkness, we see your purpose above our distress. We are complete in who we are in you. We give you everything in all control. 
Tossing our fears aside to hold you close We feel your tenderness washing over us And oh, our God is undefeated hope oh, is rising from the streams You are our victory You are our victory You calm the storms and the surging seas Oh You bring peace to the restless streets oh, 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 oh. We are your light shining in darkness we see your purpose above our distress We are complete in who we are in you Come on, sing it to the Lord, people We give you everything in all control Tossing our fears aside to hold you close We feel your tenderness Washing over us And oh Our God is undefeated Hope Is rising from the streets You are our victory You are our victory you calm the storms and the surging seas. Oh, 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 oh. You are our victory. You are our victory. You bring peace to the restless streets. Oh. Worshipping your name We will never stop singing We will never stop worshipping your name We will never stop singing We will never stop worshipping your name We will never stop singing Never stop worshiping your name. You are our victory. You are our victory. You calm the storms and the surging seas. Oh. Amen. Is he our victory today? I hope so. Tell the person next to you, I'm glad to see you today. It's great to have you here in our church, and we welcome you. If you're a visitor, please, uh, you know, there's a lot of information in the back. There's a monthly calendar back there, and we hope that you come back and get involved in the things that are going on. There's a lot of things happening. Uh, this week, Tuesday night, Bible study at 6.30, Wednesday night Bible study at 6.30, Thursday night. You want to tell us what's going on? Men's Bible study, what time? 6.30 here at the church. That's on Thursday night. And then uh, Friday night this week is praise and worship night, which also starts at 6.30. And, um, 
Anybody notice any different about the sign out front, in the front of the building? Changing it around every week, something new is happening out there. We're not done yet. We're still working on it, so uh, keep that in prayer. Um, the baby bottles for the Pregnancy Care Center are back there. Man, they, last night we had about 15 of them. They must have taken like 10 last night. So um, if you have any extra change or whatever, put them in the bottles. Uh, we want to beat last year. Last year we gave over $2,000 to the Pregnancy Care Center, which is amazing, fantastic, wonderful. And, uh, you know, a lot of babies were saved and a lot of women were able to get stuff for their babies and, you know, diapers and food and all kinds of stuff. So we want to continue with that ministry. And part of our tithes and offerings, we help uh, missionaries all over the world. We want to continue that. God's doing a good thing. You know, in our hearts, he's doing a good thing. Says that work that he started in us, he's not going to leave that work unfinished. Tell the person next to you, God is not going to leave that work unfinished. He's working on us. He's working on us. So it's great to uh, have all of you here today. And uh, we're going to have the ushers come forward. If anybody uh, would like to go to the uh, women's conference in Pine Valley, uh saturday they have a uh you can be there all day saturday and uh you can um i think there's still flyers over there but you need to get signed up if you're interested in going i think we have 10 15 ladies going um some for the whole weekend some for just saturday and uh, we encourage you you know it's a great conference and god blesses it and you get to know other ladies in the church and so if you have the time uh, check it out and get signed up for that. And uh, Jim, would you pray for our tithes and offerings? Heavenly Father, God, we thank you for this opportunity, Lord. Once again, we come before you with our tithes. Lord, we call us tithes, a tenth of what you provided us with. Lord, I ask you to uh, help us to be humble stewards, Lord, and just get back what you uh, required of us, Lord. We love you, we praise you, we thank you, and we look forward to what you have in store for us. Amen. Every step is so hard to take And all of my hope is fading away When life is a mountain that I cannot climb You carry me, Jesus carry me You are strength in my weakness And you are refuge I seek you are everything in my time of need you are everything you're everything I need when every moment is more than I can take and all of my strength is slipping away and every breath gets harder to breathe you carry me jesus carry me you are strength in my weakness and you are the refuge i see you are everything in my time of need you are everything, you are everything I need. You are, you are everything I need. I love everything about you. You are. Strength in my weakness, and you are the refuge I seek. You are everything in my time of need. You are everything, you are everything. You are strength in 
my weakness and you are the refuge I see you are everything in my time of need you are everything you are everything I need everything everything I need Lord we thank you that you are everything that we need and that you're always there for us that you love us protect us care for us listen to us we love you lord we praise you we give you all of our hearts in jesus name amen all right the kids can go to their classes and everybody else take out a bible if you have one or the ushers will be glad to get you one and turn to the book of jude and uh, we picking it up again and it's a great message for us because you can see at the top there it says, but you be spiritually sound, built up in the faith. And that's one of the things that we need to be in these days. We need to be spiritually sound. All of us. We need to be built up in the faith. And as we've been going through the book of Jude, God's given us a blueprint. He's given us a map of how to live in this these really perilous you know, confusing, chaotic, evil days. How do we live? And so Jude's pointing out to us. And he says, there's some things and there's some people that you need to be aware of. They will lead you to spiritual death. They will deceive you. They, they, they want to bring you to destruction. You know, Satan comes to kill and destroy. And uh, he's throwing his flaming missiles at us, his darts. And if you don't have the full armor of God on, you're going to fall. That's all of us. We will fall if we don't have the spiritual armor on. And so he talks about deceivers in, the, in this short book. He talks about false prophets. He talks about doctrines and schemes of Satan, which are really out there today. And he tells us to beware. Be on the alert. Tell the person next to you, be on the alert. He want, <laughs> Red alert, yeah. He wants us to be on the alert. And then he says, hey, there's going to be mockers. There's going to be skeptics, you know, that don't want to follow biblical principles. And there's a lot of mockers and skeptics out there. It's happening. People coming against you. If you say you're a Christian, you're a target. Got a big bullseye on you. Some of us have bigger bullseyes than others, but we're targets. <laughs> And, uh, you know, hopefully you have God's armor on and you're not just following the crowd because your faith is going to be challenged. It is going to be challenged. There will be persecutions, uh, the scriptures say. There will be, you know, people have this idea about hate. You know, I, I mean, hate, you know, is, is like being spurred out, spurned out, thrown out, what? out of people's mouths food. towards you. Oh, there it is, food. <laughs> I'm glad you're awake. Okay, so, faith falling away from the truth. Many have fallen away from the truth, it says. In the last days, they'll give in to the politically correct mantra of their day. And a lot of people are doing that today. You know, just follow the crowd, keep quiet, you know, let let the world brainwash you into its own doctrine and its own philosophy. And in the midst of all this, look what Paul, uh, Jude says. Turn to verse 3. Jude, verse 3. Beloved. So who's he talking to? Us. Beloved. While I was making every effort to write to you about our common salvation, I felt the necessity to write to you appealing that you do what? Contend earnestly for the faith. Contend earnestly for the faith, which was once and for all delivered to the saints. Contend earnestly for the faith. I was thinking about that, you know, many times during the week I changed the sermon. You know, because something came up during the week that, you know, speaks perfectly to what's going on, what the Bible says. And, you know, it, it, it needs to be something that we 
can apply to our lives. God says not only to be hearers of the word, but to be what? Doers of the word. Okay, so contend earnestly. You know, fight for the faith. Why? Verse 4. Certain people have crept in unnoticed. That's into the congregation. Those who were long beforehand marked out for this condemnation. Ungodly persons who turn the grace of God into licentiousness and deny our only Master and Lord Jesus Christ. They're denying Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. They're turning the grace into, you know, outright licentiousness, he talks about. And, uh, you know, I was watching a TV program this week. It was on a, a channel that's supposed to be a Christian channel, you know, and there's preachers on there all the time from all different places. And one of them, I wanted to throw my shoe at the TV. It was like heresy that was coming out from this guy's mouth. And I'm going, that's exactly what Jude was saying. And so he says in verse uh, 4, they've crept in of notice. Verse 5, so I desire to remind you, though you know all things once and for all, that the Lord, after saving a people out of the land of Egypt, what happened? Those that did not believe were what? Destroyed. Destroyed. And then it says, and angels who did not keep their proper own domain, but abandoned their proper abode, he has kept in eternal bonds under darkness for the judgment of the great day, just as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities around them, since they are in the same way as these indulged in gross immorality. Is there any gross immorality taking place in our society today? Yeah, of course, yeah, it's going on all over the place. Gross immorality we talked a little bit about that last week they went after strange flesh they are exhibited as an example in undergoing the punishment of eternal fire you know there's a lot of people christians that don't believe in hell even though so much of scripture talks about eternal punishment you know hey how can a loving god you know send someone to hell because he's a righteous god exactly I mean, why, if you deny him on, the, on, the, on this earth, why would he want to say, hey, you know, come and have fellowship with me? You've denied him. You've, you've rejected him. You're in rebellion towards him. And so he describes it as eternal fire, unquenchable fire, torment, day and night, forever and ever. Do you want anybody to go there? No, no of course not. And so God, you know, talks a lot about this in the scriptures. And so people today, a lot of them call evil good. They say, it's okay. Go ahead and practice evil. Every man does what is right in his own eyes. You know, just accept it. And, uh, you know, God says, no. I mean, we need to be standing, contending for the faith in these last days, right? Right? Uh, I was reading another report about what was going on in the school districts back east and how they were saying, we're not teaching critical race theory in our schools. And they were continuing, the school board was continuing lying about what they were teaching in their schools. And so people got a hold of the curriculum, and sure enough, critical race theory was right there. Just, it was all over the place they were teaching in the schools. And so there's a lot of lying that's going on today, especially when the, the, they're being exposed for their lies. And uh, so that's taking place today. But you Christians, just calm down. Keep quiet. Keep quiet. It's okay. You know, I mean, the number of sexual assaults that have taken place because the, the guys can go into the girls' bathroom. There's another one that just took place this last week. I, I mean, at, at, we have the Olympics going on. Even though China has so abused people and put them in political camps, and you know, and you can't, it, it's not freedom that's taking place at all, but we've got to have the money and everything else for to have the Olympics in China. Who's making money? China. China. You know that we, we gave China a billion dollars? Part of the whole, you know, 
virus thing. We gave them a billion dollars. We couldn't manufacture some of those things that in the United States. So we gave a billion dollars. Do you know how much a billion dollars is? Just write a check to Calvary Chapel of Mesa. I'll show you. <laughs> it's amazing. It's so much money. But are we aware of it? Why won't the National Basketball Association speak out against the many abuses that are taking place? Anybody have an idea? It's all about the money. Follow the sponsorships. You know, I, I, a guy that I coached in high school, uh, he went to UCLA, was there one year, and then he got drafted into the NBA. He was a first round draft pick and part of what happened the first year is all these sponsors wanted to sponsor him. And so they, you know, because basketball is really big in China, really big. And so he got a contract just to make shoes or to have his name on the shoes and his name on the, the back of uniforms and different things, over $100,000. They gave him. $100,000. And that's just, I mean, you talk about some of the bigger stars that are getting money from China. I mean, it, it's a political thing that's taking place. We need to be aware of it. Yeah, he talks about here, he talks about in uh, Sodom and Gomorrah, indulged in gross immorality. And it says, these men, verse 8, by dreaming defile the flesh and, and reject authority, Revile angelic majesties. But Michael, the archangel, when he disputed with the devil, argued about the body of Moses, did not dare pronounce a railing, pronounce against him a railing judgment, but said, Dave Riley, rebuke you. No, there's no power in that name. What did he say? Jesus, the Lord rebuke you. There's power in the name of Jesus, isn't there? But these men revile the things which they do not understand and the things which they know by instinct like unreasoning reasoning animals. By these things they are destroyed. And then woe, verse 11, woe to them, for they've gone the way of Cain for pay. They've rushed headlong into the air of Balaam. They perished in the rebellion of Korah. And uh, we took a look at these the last few weeks. And then he says, These men are like those who are hidden reefs in your love feasts. When they feast with you without fear, caring for themselves, clouds without water, uh, carried along by winds, autumn trees without fruit, doubly dead, uprooted, wild waves of the sea, casting up their own shame like wandering stars for whom the black darkness has been reserved forever. And about these are Enoch in the seventh generation from Adam prophesied, saying, Behold, the Lord came with many thousands, many thousands of his holy ones. Why? To execute judgment upon all, to convict all the ungodly of their ungodly deeds, which they have done in an ungodly way. And all the harsh things which ungodly sinners have spoken against them, they are grumblers, finding fault, following after their own lusts. They speak arrogantly, flattering people. Why? For the sake of gaining an advantage. Now, again, in verse 17, this is for us today. This is where we left off. In verse 17, he says, but you, beloved. So things change right there. He's describing all these, uh, all this wickedness and deception and lying taking place. And then he talks to the church, but you. Now he's talking to us. You know, God doesn't want us to be entangled by sin. You know, if you are entangled by sin pretty soon, you, you don't want to come to church because you're convicted. You're not living for God. Your Bible is put on a shelf somewhere, drawing dust. You know, you, your prayer life is gone. I mean, Satan would love that. He doesn't have to worry about Christians that are just following the crowd. But when you stand up for Jesus, that's a whole different thing. You're a bullseye. You're going to be hated. You're going to be persecuted for righteousness' sake. And, uh, you know, 
people, I've heard so many, when they stepped out of fellowship, they got involved, they got addicted to a lot of different things. They got addicted to alcohol, they got addicted to drugs, they got addicted to cookies down the street, <laughs> Netflix, porn, all kinds of different things, and it's destroying their lives. So God tells us, how can we avoid spiritual disaster? And you're doing one of those things right now. You're right here in this congregation. You're listening to God's word today. You know, Jude would be a perfect preacher for our day and age. Perfect. He would say, hey, I, I wanted to teach to you about the original tent is to write about your common salvation, about what God's done in your life. But I felt the necessity that you would contend earnestly for the faith. Contenders for the faith. You know, contenders for the crown of life. We're all contenders for the crown of life. Um, people have a lot of things they contend for. You know, uh, and, and some things are just kind of neutral. They're not necessarily wrong unless you make a God out of them. And... Uh, God says, I want you to follow me. I love that song. Uh, I have decided to do what? Follow Jesus. Follow Jesus. I hope every person and those listening online have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. You know, last week on, the, on the, just on the online you know, stuff, the different places you can watch online, we had 10,000 people. 10,000 people that at least turned on for, you know, minutes or the whole sermon or whatever. That's amazing. That blows my mind. You know, so God even used the virus to, you know, have people watch the, you know, sermons online. But I'm glad you're actually here. But I've decided to follow Jesus. In this crazy world that we live in, with all the evil, all the trials, all the tribulation, all the chaos, all the confusion... We need Jesus more than ever. Would you agree? Yeah. Scriptures say, I can do all things through who? Christ. Through Christ who what? Christ. Strengthens me. I need to be strengthened every day. I don't know about you. You know, because you get weary, you get, you know, sometimes discouraged, sometimes depressed about all the different things that are going on. I need Jesus. I need him to strengthen me. That's why it says, but you be spiritually sound, be built up in the faith. Live for Jesus. Paul said, for me to live is what? Christ. And to die is? Gain. You know, someone came up to me. I was talking to someone after Wednesday night service. And I said to him, hey, we haven't seen you on weekends. You know, I haven't seen you Saturday or Sunday. And the person said to me, well, you have too many scripture verses. <laughs> you have too many scripture verses. And I go, well, that's, I write down all the scripture verses and some extras so that you can look them up to, throughout the week. Right? And it's like, what? <laughs> look them up throughout the week? You know, yeah, do a little homework. Doesn't it say study to show yourselves approved unto God, workmen that need not be ashamed? There's a couple of words that people don't like. Study is one of them. <laughs> Another one they don't like is work out your salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who is a work within you, both to will and to work for his good pleasure. We don't like the word work. I'm retired. I can drink my coffee and not have to do anything all throughout the week. You know, that's what people say. And so we don't like to, you know, I mean, part of the spiritual life is you and reading your scriptures and praying and being in fellowship. I have decided to follow Jesus. I don't care what the world's doing. No turning back. No turning back. For me to live as Christ and to die is gain. I get to be with the Lord. So God says, right now, start living for Christ. Whatever you've done in the past, it's in the past. You can't change it. Start living for Christ today. If you want more peace, you want more patience, you want more kindness, you want more gentleness in your life, you want more self-control, you want more love, loving people like we should, start living for Jesus. 
You know, on Wednesday night, it blew my mind. There was a guy that was here. Sitting right where you're sitting, Chuck. And uh, Dan, <laughs> it must be the seat. Move over one. We, no, no. And, and right there on Wednesday night, you know, uh, Dan was preaching. He does a great job on Wednesday nights. And this guy goes, Ugh! real loud. And then it's like he's yawning. And I'm going, could he put his hand over his mouth? But it was like all the attention was drawn to him, you know. I mean, what's wrong with him, you know? Take it outside. Yawn outside, you know. I mean, but it, it, it was, what? What? Oh, was it you? No, it wasn't. <laughs> It was so distracting. Satan would love to distract us in our walk with the Lord. And, uh, you know, the vain philosophy of this world, there was a professor um, in a major college, and because of the pandemic, the, the, uh, the class was online. And so he, he went to his son, if his dad went to his son and he says, hey, you know, I'm just wondering what this class is all about. Do you mind if I sit in for a lesson? And so he sat in for the lesson. He was so angry about what he was hearing in this class. I mean, he, the guy used the F word about 20 times. You know, he used the G word all kinds of times. And, and his philosophy was so out there, it was, it was so ridiculous. And he's thinking, I'm paying for my son's education to listen to this crap? He could not believe it. You know, and uh, so many places that is taking place. And it's the false doctrine, the false prophets, the deceivers following after their own lusts, it says. You know, our, our, we need to have a vital relationship with God today. One of the scriptures says, um, you will know them by their fruits. And uh, the fruit of this guy was just crazy. So God says in verse 17, But you, beloved, ought to remember the words that were spoken beforehand by the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. And, you know, uh, the apostles, you know, we have books written by Peter. We have books written by Paul. We have books written by John and Luke and Matthew and you know, all the different apostles. I mean, how many books do we have in the Bible? Anybody remember? 66. Only 66. How many in the New Testament? Twenty-seven is a good number. <laughs> and so we used to remember math. 66 minus 27 is how many in the Old Testament? 39. We're warned by these guys about the days in which we live and how to avoid spiritual disaster. Don't follow what the world says. You know, God says, hey, get into his word. Study his word. Pray. Be in fellowship with one another. And he's going to say it again in verse 21. But you ought to remember the words. Man, meditate upon God's word. I used to love, I, I, I used to live North County many, many years ago, and it took me about 35 minutes to get to work. And those 35 minutes were great because I could turn on a, a Bible tape and listen to the tape. I could turn on Christian music going one way and back the other way. I loved it. Now I live only five minutes away, 10 minutes away. It's a lot different, but we still need to be in God's word. I mean, st studying to show ourselves approved, memorizing scripture. You know, I, I, thy word have I hid in my heart that what? I may not sin against thee. You know, memorize one of these verses. Verse 21 would be a great verse to memorize. But memorize scripture. Put it in your heart, in your mind. 
you know that you get to know Jesus better. Don't deny Jesus Christ. Don't deny that he is your Lord, your Messiah. Your eternal destiny depends upon your faith in Jesus. Be founded in the faith, Jude says. And then uh, verse 18. They were saying to you, in the last time there will be mockers. That the, There are mockers, so many today. Following after their own ungodly lusts. These are the ones who cause division, worldly minded, devoid of the spirit. Again, in verse 20, he says, but you, beloved. Here's where I get the title from. Building yourselves up on your most holy faith. Building yourself up on the most holy faith. You know, Jesus said, there's a lot of signs that he said would take place in the last days. And these would increase like birth pains of a woman that's about to give birth. That's, the intensity is going to increase. We see the intensity of these signs increasing today. And that was supposed to be a sign of when Jesus was coming back again. Tell the person next to you, be ready for his return. Be ready. Philosophies of men attacking your faith. Evolution, abortion, um, marriages being super attacked today. Uh, sexual sins being accepted and tolerated. All these things are going on. Trafficking. There was a, a lady that I talked to this last week. She has two daughters. They were with some friends at Parkway Plaza. Everybody know where Parkway Plaza is? And when they were walking along the stores, there was a guy that grabbed one of her daughters and tried to take her away. You know, El Cajon's one of the highest places for sex trafficking. Man, and people think, oh, it's a safe place to go. You know, you better know where your kids are. You know, and have them walk with you, because that could happen. We hear about it all the time, people trying to snatch away those kids and sell them in the sex trade and all those other things that are going on. It's a horrible that somebody would even think about doing that. Be built up in the faith. You know, uh, this place, um, when we first moved in here, we had a lease to own. And the guy, Seagull Electric Building, you, the sign said Seagull Electric Building. And above here, there's like a million, you know, plug-ins for lamps and stuff that came down. Well, the wall all the way down, this is supposed to be a solid wall. And, uh, and then when we built the second story, we had to take the cap off and make sure, show the, the uh, permit guy that it was a solid wall. Well, it wasn't a solid wall. When it was built, it's just the brick all the way down. And the, the inspector said, sorry, I can't approve this. You guys are going to have to build that wall stronger. And so we had to take all the caps off, and we had to put cement and rebar and all kinds of stuff to make it super, super strong. And we're glad we did. We had to do it. So now you could drive a truck through it and it wouldn't break the wall down, you know. But right over here, um, right about where Judy is over there, wave your hand, Judy. There used to be a pond right there. You're sitting right where the pond was. And you came in the door and the pond was right there. Well, when we dug it up, the pond was sinking. <laughs> And so we had to redo it again with cement and, and rebar and all the other stuff to make it strong. And uh, the sign, when we were taking down the top part of the sign, it was amazing. It had this big, gigantic uh, iron pole going right up the middle of it. And the guy said, I, had, I did not realize at all how thick that pole was and how big that iron pole was. So nothing, I mean, it was up there for 60 years. And they made it so it would not come down. And, uh, you know, the, they didn't have any idea about the blades that we have in our day and age and everything. But it took a long time to cut that thing up. It was built strong. God says to us, our faith 
in these perilous days needs to be built strong. If it's not, with all these things coming against us, it's going to collapse. He wants us to grow mature in our faith. It's solid foundation. Solid. And uh, strong in our faith, not weak. Spiritually prepared for warfare. We are in warfare today. If you don't think you are, just listen to the news. Read the newspaper. You know, watch some of these crazy programs on TV. Be on the alert, he tells us. Don't take a Sunday off. Don't take a week off. One week without Jesus makes one W-E-A-K, week. And a lot of people think, well, you know, I'll hit or miss. You know, I'll come once a month, twice a month. Uh, I'll listen to programs, you know, whenever I feel like it. You know, hey, I've got, I'm retired. I, I got a long work to do, you know, or something else. And God says, no, the first place you need to be is building up yourself in the most holy faith. And then he says, and pray. You know, that's part of the praying process that he wants us to lift up our prayers to him. And uh, what do we lift, what do we pray about? The Bible says everything. Little things, big things. Do all of us have trials and tribulations and different things we're going through? We need to be in prayer, praying about them. The scriptures say unceasingly. Be in prayer. Be a man. Be a woman of prayer. I don't know about you, but, you know, um, I can always remember this prayer. Rub-a-dub-dub, thanks for the grub. <laughs> yeah, Lord. Rub-a-dub-dub, thanks for the grub. If we're still praying like that 40 years later, something's wrong. <laughs> and, then, and I encourage you, Pray. You know, how many times, you know, when we just stop and we just hold hands and we pray around the meal, somebody comes up to us and says, hey, I saw you guys praying. Are you guys Christians? And he said, yes. God says, don't be ashamed of the gospel. It's the power of God unto eternal life. Don't be ashamed. Yes, we are. You know, and our evening prayers, you know, when we go to bed at night, you know, pray for your kids. Pray for your grandkids. Pray for your friends. You know, pray for your relationship with Jesus. And it's not, now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. If I should die before I wake. I pray the Lord my soul to take or something like that. How many of you had that prayer when you first? Okay. If you're praying the same prayer, you aren't growing. <laughs> you're an adult now, right? And now we know there's so many other things we could be praying about. And so contend earnestly for the faith. Be built up. Get the whole package that God wants to give you. And then he says in the next verse, build yourselves up. Keep yourselves. This is a good verse to memorize. Keep yourselves in the love of God waiting anxiously for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ to eternal life. You know, don't get off to the right or to the left. Don't be swayed by every philosophy, every wind and doctrine that's out there that comes along. Keep yourself in the center of God's will. Keep yourself in the center of God's will. Keep yourself in the love of God. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of churches that never even talk about the Lord's return. God can return. He says, waiting anxiously for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. We should be living in light of the fact that Jesus died yesterday, rose today, and he could be coming back again tomorrow. That's how we should be living. Not sleeping, not yawning ourselves, not bored you know, um, they never think about God could come back. And you're going to reap what you sow. You know, he's going to judge us for our actions. Some for great eternal rewards, and some they'll have no rewards in heaven. Every one of us is going to be held accountable. The scriptures say every one of us is without excuse. Here's a great verse of memory. Confess with your mouth. 
Jesus as Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead and you shall be saved. What are you setting your heart on? <clears throat> Is there something that's taking away your love for Jesus? You know, I love sports. You know I love sports. Uh, the Super Bowl's coming up. My team, the Rams, are in the Super Bowl. Some of you were Charger fans. I was a Charger fan, but no longer. It's a sin to be a Charger fan today. Always was. <laughs> But there, there's coming up now, you know, they're playing the Cleveland Browns, you know, in the, in the world championship. Or Cincinnati Browns? Bengals, there you go. See, I don't even know the name of the other team. It doesn't matter. The Rams are going to win. Now, I can be a Rams fan. It's okay. But if it keeps me from loving Jesus, then something's wrong. Something's wrong. And we can have so many things that, you know, we become entangled with that we put above our relationship with Jesus. And God says, man, confess your sin. He's faithful and righteous to forgive you and to cleanse you. The Padres are my baseball team. Win or lose. And they've had a lot of losing seasons. I can remember Qualcomm. What is it? 80,000 people can, in the old Qualcomm Stadium. And I can remember times when they were lucky to get 100, 200 people, 1,000 people. And I might be the only one cheering because <laughs> we didn't win a whole lot of games for a lot of years. But they're still my team. And... Uh, is Jesus still the Lord and Savior of our lives? Or have we given in to the world system? And that's what he's talking about. You know, I, I hope we haven't given in to the world system. The world system is, has gone the wrong way. It's gone the wrong way. And God says, don't be conformed to this world, but be what? Transform. Couple last verses. Turn in your Bibles to Second Peter. Second Peter chapter three. <clears throat> Verse seventeen. You therefore, again talking to us, beloved. Knowing this beforehand, be on your guard, lest being carried away by the air of unprincipled men, you fall from your own steadfastness. Don't be carried away by the air of unprincipled men. You know, know this beforehand. Be on the alert. But, verse 18, grow. Here's the other side. Grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. God wants us to be continually growing. Go back one chapter to chapter 2, 2 Peter. Verse 18. And for the person that's not here, I'll go really slow. Give you plenty of time to find it. Too many scriptures. <laughs> Too many scriptures. <laughs> but speaking out, for speaking out arrogant words of vanity, they entice by fleshly desires, by sensuality, those who barely escape from the ones who live in air promising them freedom while they themselves are slaves of corruption. By what a man is overcome, by this he will be enslaved. 
For if they have escaped the defilements of the world by the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and they again entangle themselves and are overcome, the last state would be worse than the first. You know, be under self-control. Be on the alert. Don't be entangled with them. Don't have walls built up that keep you from your relationship with Jesus. Keep walking with Jesus. Keep yourself in the love of the Lord. Close your Bibles. We're going to take communion. The Corinthian church was a very... Um, the love of the flesh, the love of the eyes, the pride of life, sensuality was all over the place in the early Corinthian church. And God said, hey, as you come together to take communion, some of you are taking communion unworthily. You're throwing it back into the face of Christ, your life. And he says, some of you are sick and some of you have died because of you've rejected Jesus. You've turned aside to all these other things, sinning blatantly. And uh, God is here today. I know he's here. And uh, he, he says, I am not mocked. You'll reap what you sow. And so God challenges, make sure you're in the will of God. Make sure you're doing what God wants you to do. Make sure that you're following after him. You're on the alert. You have your spiritual armor on. You're walking with him in faith. And uh, I just want you to close your eyes. Have you had your sins forgiven by Jesus? Have they been cleansed? Have they been healed? Or are you separated from God? Here's some things that might separate you from God. Bitterness, resentment, jealousy, strife, rebellion, Lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, pride of life, lying, fornication, adultery, stealing. You know, I mean, the list goes on and on. You've missed the mark. And right now, God's offering you forgiveness. Man, my list is long. And I've confessed my sins, and God says, I have blotted them out as far as the east is from the west. I've forgiven them. Man, it feels so good to be forgiven. It feels so good, such a release. And then God says, hey, don't go back to that. You've been set free. You're one of my kids now. Keep yourselves walking with me, building up your faith on a daily basis, falling more in love with me daily. I keep falling in love with you over and over again, Jesus. And the, the guys that are serving communion are coming up and they're getting the bread and the juice. And The challenge to that Corinthian church was do an examination of your life. Is there anything in your life that you need to ask forgiveness for today? Start fresh. Start new. Have my joy. He says, I want to give you joy. I'm not a killjoy. I want to give you joy. I want to give you life more abundantly. I want to give you peace that passes all understanding. And right now as we're getting ready to take communion, if there's anything in your life you need to ask forgiveness for, just raise your hand right now. Thank you, Jesus. You see those hands. And the many that are watching online, you see those hands. And Lord, right now we ask that you forgive us and heal us and set us free. I want to be that man of God. I want to be that woman of God that you want us to be, Lord. I want to serve you. I want to have joy even in the midst of trials and tribulations and persecution. I want that joy that you want to give me today. God, I don't want to be caught up in all these other things. I want to be set free. And Lord, right now, through the airwaves, on, online, watching, people watching, and here at this church, we're asking for your forgiveness. We're asking for your cleansing. 
we want to build a solid foundation. I have decided, I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. We invite you to come. As, take a stand for Jesus. Come. Get of the bread and the juice. And you, you can't live off your wife's relationship. You can't live off your husband's relationship. You can't live off Pastor Dave. Heaven, no. You can't live off his relationship. It's your personal relationship with Jesus. No matter what anybody else is doing. Come as we sing. Are you hurting and broken within? Overwhelmed by the weight of your sin? Jesus is calling. Have you come to the end of yourself? Do you thirst for a drink from the well? Jesus is calling. Oh, come to the altar, the Father's arms are open wide, forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. and mistakes come today there's no reason to wait Jesus is calling bring your sorrows and trade them for joy from the ashes a new life is born Jesus is calling Come to the altar, the Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. thank you for your body that was broken for us Lord you bought us with the price of your blood you set us free from Satan's grip Satan's prowling around like a roaring lion seeking someone to devour I pray that we'd be strong in your faith in these days Lord this crazy world so much chaos and confusion and evil God, Satan's out there. He has his devices and his schemes, but you are stronger. You are greater. 
It says, greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. God, we need your help. We can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. We need your strength, Lord. Your disciples, you knew what was going to happen. Just, Lord, the persecution, the trials that were going to come. And Lord, you took that time with them at that upper room. And you said while they were eating, you took some bread and you blessed it and you broke it. And you gave it to your disciples and you said, take and eat. This is my body, which is going to be broken for you. As often as you do this, do this in remembrance of me, that we'd always remember you, Lord. Those watching online, if they have crackers or Cheez-Its or whatever it is, it represents your body broken for us. Take and eat. And you said, you took a cup and you gave thanks and you gave it to them and you said, drink, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is to be shed on behalf of many for forgiveness of sins, his blood shed for us. And he says, but I say to you, I will not drink of the fruit of this vine from now until the day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. And that's the part where it says waiting anxiously for his return. When he comes back, he's going to take us home to the Father's kingdom and we're going to be celebrating the supper. The supper of the Lamb. And we're going to be taking again that juice. And whatever you have at home, water, grape juice, little wine, whatever it may be, Diet Coke. We remember Christ's blood that washes away our sins as far as the east is from the west. And every time Satan tries to bring up those sins again, you just say, get lost, Satan. I've been set free by the blood of the Lamb, redeemed. So we partake of this juice in remembrance of what Jesus did for us. Take and drink. <clears throat> now to him who is able to do exceedingly beyond all that we ask or think. Guess what? God's doing miracles. He's doing miracles. You know, never forget he's with you. I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. He's walking with you. Be strong in the faith. Be strong in the faith. Be strong in the strength of his might. Amen? Amen. We all need that. We all need that. I need that every day. You need that every day. Be strong in the strength of the Lord's might. Let's sing our closing song. Oh, uh, there's food out there. Help yourselves. Take it with you. Pass it along to other people. It's amazing, you know, how far that that food goes. You know, uh, it's from the Lord. So just tell people. Um, you know, we're going to be going out in a couple of weeks and on a Friday night at five o'clock, and we're just going to go to the hitching post and the trailer parks and a lot of the different areas around here if you want to come and join us it's uh i think it's in two or three weeks and uh, just share the love of christ hey we're just we have some free food from jesus you know we'd like to give it to you and you can do that with your neighbors and your friends as well i i, I the reports i'm getting back at how it just opens up doors to talk about jesus and uh so god's doing a good work don't get discouraged. The things that are happening are just saying to us, it's getting closer. My return is getting closer. Live for me. If you wake up tomorrow, 
live for Jesus. Get in the word. Get a little devotional. You have lunch at work. Take your Bibles. Read a little bit. You know, you're around the table. Pray. Ask God's blessing upon this. You know, your husband or your wife or your kids at night, you know, just pray over them. They need prayer today. There's such a battle for the minds of those kids. You know, I told you about what's going on in Foothills, the uh, preschool there. It's closed down. I don't know when it's going to open up again, but this last week I heard about another Christian preschool, um, Trinity Presbyterian Church. I know the principal there. She used to be a teacher here at our church, and she said the same thing has happened to her school, that preschool there. Um, the state has come out and, and was there all day examining all their records and everything that was going on, and a couple of kids took off their mask, and, you know, so there was a <laughs> two-year-old. Come on, really? And... Uh, they want to close her down. They're trying to close her down. And uh, then she, she's such a smart lady. God's given her wisdom and discernment because the state regulators wanted to go to her elementary school and wanted to do the same thing in her elementary school, trying to close them down. And uh, she said, I'm, I'm going to go see your elementary school. And she said, no, you're not. We're a private pub, uh, school. You don't have authority to go to our elementary school. And she got puffy and prideful, and she said, I'm going. You can't stop me. And she said, yes, I can. And she pulled out a document that said that they had no authority. She was prepared. Now, they've been back three times for the preschool, but they haven't been able to touch her elementary school. And she pulled out the document, and she said, look, here's the document. I, I, I have authority not to let you go into these classrooms. And she said, wait a minute. I'm going to call my supervisor. This is a negative attitude. She called her supervisor and said, look, they have this report. You know, what should I do? And the supervisor, thank God, said, you have no authority to go into her elementary school. You can't do anything. You need to walk away. Talk about a tax. See, let's start getting control of the minds of the younger kids. And then we'll get them in high school, then we'll get them in college. You know the number of kids that fall away from the faith once they stop, you know, in, in high school days? Something like 60% or higher of Christian kids. They know better. We know better than you. You know, we don't have to listen to you anymore. I told one kid, you see this white hair? God says, that's wisdom. <laughs> and I said, eventually you'll realize that what the scriptures say is true. It's what God wants us to live by. So God bless you. Tell the person next to you, I'm glad I was here today. Have a great day. God bless.